Hello, and welcome to the Eve Echo Chamber. Today, we are back in the new player guide, and today we are going to focus on mining. Seriously, we're actually going to focus on mining this time. And it's not my fault about the last video, okay? If NetEase wanted me to teach you how to mine, they would have given me mining lasers with the venture. I had to spend money on that crap to teach you how to mine today. Alright, let's get started. Alright, so first things first, uh, I'm showing you my character skill sheet because I do not have a skill in training. Remember, I'm an alpha account, so I can only train one character at a time. I warned you to always have a skill training because you will earn more SP than the quote-unquote free SP you get when you are not training. This character just finished Frigates 5, so I don't have anything else I want to train on him right now. So I'm moving the training over to a different character. That is why you will see me ignoring my own advice and having an empty skill queue for this video and any other video that features this character for a while. Right. Mining. And because of the uh, little switcheroo I pulled last time, I'm showing you my fit. I actually have mining lasers. I had to buy these, but it's okay because I bought them from my own character who got them by killing miners with a venture. So here's my fit, and my fit is terrible because I literally just put the miners onto the same venture I used before. I do find it funny. I check the recommended fitting in a minute, and the recommended fitting includes the stasis web of fire, which is weird because you don't have any guns, and I think they would want to teach you to run away rather than try to fight. If you were serious about mining, I would suggest you keep the afterburner, that's part of not getting caught, always stay moving, that I taught you in my mining video, but I would recommend the other low slot you use either a armored plate or a shield extender, the ones where you can activate them and they give you a massive boost to your HP. This is as a panic button if you were doing something you were not supposed to be doing, like being AFK, and you suddenly heard that alarm on your phone that you're about to die. You could press the button, press autopilot, warp away, and as long as they don't have more than one warp disruptor, you should get away fine, because the venture has a bonus to warp strength. So I told you we are staying in high sec, and what are we mining? We are mining pyroxies, because when I did the video yesterday, I realized how much income could be made by just mining pyroxies and selling it right away. What I mean by this is if you look at the advanced tutorial rewards like I am right now, you see that one of these skill chips you are rewarded with at the end is for common ore reprocessing. This is a very important skill if you're a miner, because if you go out and you mine all day, you bring the mineral, you bring the ore back, you reprocess it into minerals. And if you're doing it now without any skills, you are wasting a ton of money. The pyroxies we sell without ever thinking about reprocessing it because it's such a valuable commodity right now due to its use in those encounters from the last video. In that video, I suggest to aspiring space truckers that they use those Pyroxy's encounters to decide what is worth doing for their own activities. And I suggest the same for miners. I think you should mine Pyroxy's a few times, see how valuable your ore hold is each time you do this, and use that to decide if mining something different is better or worse. So you should either set a timer or look at the system clock, go out and mine pyroxies in your venture. Do this until you have a full ore hold and then stop the timer or write down the time on the system clock. Then you take it back to market, you sell it, and you use that amount of profit to determine your ISK per hour. I'll do that in this video, but realize that I have no mining skills. This is just a trainer venture with Mark III miners. Your mileage may vary. Let's learn about breaking rocks into smaller rocks. So you should notice that I am orbiting the asteroid. This is because pretending we were in low sec, we want to build that habit to always be moving to make it harder for somebody to jump us. Also, I think this is a difference from mining in EVE Online. If you look at my target in the top right, the asteroid actually has a health bar. Last time I tried mining in EVE Online, many, many years ago, you actually had to have a separate module to scan the asteroid to see how much ore was in there. You also saw me check my ore hold. This is because if you are a super serious miner, you should know exactly 
how much of whatever you're mining can fit in your ore hold, and you can see the pop-ups each time a cycle completes on your miner of how much ore is coming in. And you should be able to do fast math, because you're definitely not AFKing, and determine exactly how much time you need until you're ready to move on to the next asteroid or the next system. That's why that health bar on the asteroid is so helpful. You can see when the asteroid is about to deplete, and then you know you need to move to a new asteroid. Mining does have a certain appeal, a lot like space trucking does. It's a mostly AFK activity, and any time you do look at your phone, you still get to see all the beautiful visuals of space. You're not staying in a station or anything. I think mining lasers look pretty as well. It is a fairly low-risk activity, and allows you to earn steady ISK too. And there's a lot of possibilities of what you can do with it. You can use the minerals yourself. You can try to play the market with them. You can provide them to your corp if they have a big project going on. Or you can just sell them. And mining is unique in that the actual activity of mining does not lose anything to taxes. You only lose it to taxes when you sell it. Now going back to that thing I mentioned with the skill chip, I'll talk more about it at the end of the video. But with what we're doing with pyroxies, we're just going to sell the raw pyroxies. Now if you were mining something else, I would suggest the same. You either sell the raw ore, or you stockpile it until you get the reprocessing skills to 5, or you find someone else who has high reprocessing skills to do it for you, in your corp for example. Otherwise I think you're just wasting money. In case you haven't noticed, this video is sped up to 4x speed. But I'm still going to jump ahead a little bit, because there's something I want to talk about, and I realize it's going to be a long wait if I just wait for the video to get there. So in the top left, under my character's face, there's that box that's partially orange with a percentage. That is the inventory shortcut. You can click on the plus, and you can choose which shortcuts you have or don't have. If it has a little orange dot, it is displayed. If you are a miner, you should most certainly keep that inventory box up there because that shows you the percentage of your ore hold. So the same way in my combat videos, I told players to activate each module and find out what percentage of their capacitor is required to run that module every time they get into a new ship or a new fit. Every time you get an upgraded miner, or you change mining ships, or you increase your mining skills, you should run one mining laser and see how much percentage your inventory goes up. Just there, you see me do a stupid little min-maxing thing. I split the stack of ore in my ore hold, and then I move as much of it as I can to my cargo hold, so that I can fit that little bit more into my ore hold. Min-maxing, man. Yeah. If you pay attention to the inventory shortcut percentage, you don't need to do math anymore. Well, the math is a lot simpler. Since it gives you the percentages, you can see how many cycles you need to get 100% ore capacity. Mining lasers can also have their cycle interrupted. You can turn off the mining laser early, and you will get however much ore you mined by that point of the cycle. If, for example, you are at 99% inventory, you do not have to wait for the entire miner cycle to finish. You can stop it early as soon as you've gotten to whatever point you need to get that last percent. Just a moment, let's jump ahead again. So by doing this, you can check the relevant skills. These are the skills that when you increase them, you should check how much percentage you get each time you run your miner again. Be sure to also check the relevant skills for your mining lasers themselves. Doing it this way is much easier than looking through all of the skills and writing them down. And after this, we are going to fast forward again to when I arrive in station. Ignore that there are stacks of one pyroxies at the moment, I fixed that in a minute. But here I want to show you that you can do the same thing we just did for your ship to see what skills affect the reprocessing of whatever ore you've mined. I made those stacks of one because I'm not a miner and I didn't realize that you need 100 units in order to reprocess. I wanted to reprocess one stack of 100, compare the value of the minerals I get from that ore, to the value of 100 pyroxies. This is the kind of math you'll need to do if you're serious about mining, because I've been advising you to just sell the pyroxies straight, but first you should check to make sure that the value of the minerals you get from processing the pyroxies is lower 
than the value of selling the pyroxys itself. Hopefully you know by now to ignore the value that it gives you as an estimate. It's only an estimate. You need to actually check the market yourself to see the real prices. I actually make a mistake when I do this. I forgot to check the buy orders and I end up selling my pyroxys for less than I could have gotten for it. Because as I've been running pyroxys courier encounters, I normally buy pyroxys for 170 isk each, so I sold it for that amount. But there was a buy order in my station for 176 isk each. I could have made an additional 6 isk each. Even if you do the activity of mining AFK, you cannot get your isk completely AFK. Pay attention when you're at the market. I do not commit to this sell order yet, but you see me estimating what I think the price is and how much I think I will earn. And then I go to the market to check other sell orders to see what other people are selling it for. If you watched my last video, you recognize that first order, some jack wagon selling it for around 600 isk. You are welcome to try this. Knowing how many people want to buy pyroxies, I'm sure somebody will make the mistake and buy your extremely overpriced pyroxies. If you look at the far left side, that button beneath the green shopping cart, that is what you want to check. Those are the buy orders for pyroxies in the station. But as you can see, I did not check there, and I just sell it for the same price I estimated, missing out on 6 isk per. Nevertheless, let's do our calculations based on how much I actually sold it for. Now you can improve this by improving your mining skills, upgrading beyond the Venture Trainer, and get more organized so that you hoard it all in a station near your mining site, ideally in the same system, and transport it later. And just bringing one ore hold directly to market. 260,000 isk is not bad. And when you sell the Pyroxys itself, you're helping all of the encounter runners out there. Everybody wins. Thank you for watching. This has been the Eve Echo Chamber. Fly safe.